Real GDP is short for real gross domestic product, and it's a measure of the total value of all goods or services produced in an economy in a given period. It would be like summing up the daily payments in every market for a good or service not used to produce another good or service in an economy. Imagine all those supply and demand curves. That last part is important, by the way. GDP only includes the value of goods or services not used to produce other goods or services. So you wouldn't count the value of the software Chase uses to run its banking operations in GDP. The real part of the name means that this value has been adjusted for the effects of price changes across the economy. We wouldn't want to confuse the actual value for a good or service produced in an economy with the value of the currency being used to produce it, for example. As opposed to nominal GDP, which calculates the value of those final goods or services and expresses them in the current period values. This means that you can have a situation where the real GDP declines, maybe because we're producing less stuff, but the nominal GDP rises, maybe because scarcity leads to higher equilibrium prices for goods and services. Real GDP is useful for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is that it gives us a good idea of the business cycle trends of an economy. Real GDP strips out the effects of changes in price unrelated to the utility or specific value of a good or service. An economy's business cycle has a pattern of what we call expansions and recessions, also called contractions. Expansions usually end at the peak of a business cycle, and recessions then follow, ending with the trough of the business cycle, which then leads into another period of expansions and so on. In the United States, the general trend of real GDP has been one of exponential growth, despite the nine recessions we have experienced since the 1960s, for now. That's important because this trend isn't just a line on your screen or in your textbook. It represents jobs, income, and investment. And those are exactly the costs we may be incurring when we let real GDP go off the track. The most obvious challenge with grasping real GDP may be actually getting to it. We know GDP is the total value of the final goods and services produced in the economy. But how do we figure out just what part of that value represents currency appreciation or depreciation rather than the real utility or quality of products? More on that when we cover inflation next.